on the little exhortations. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. Father, this is your word. This is truth. People have continually attacked it and telling us it's not worth it. People nowadays have twisted it. People have made their own Bibles. People are trying to defeat the core message of turning to Christ to be saved. But we hold to that and we ask you to hold us together in that as we explore again the minds of, of the Spirit in the Word of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be for all Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Brother Richard is taking a group of people on April 19th to Manhattan to uh, knock down the Temple of Baal. <laughs> So, please, please sign up to go with Brother Richard, and he'll take you in on the trains, of course. So, uh, they are building a temple to Baal. It's getting very scary out there. And one of the favorite politicians out there said, the unborn have no rights. I won't tell you who who the person is, but you can just guess. Verse 17, rejoice always. How many are passing that one? You rejoice always. Do you rejoice always? Yes. Now I look at some of you, I don't see you rejoicing always. You know what you say? You're hanging. That's because maybe we haven't experienced the abundant life. What's the abundant life, John 10.10? 10? The abundant life is that you know God supplies for all your needs and you have so much you have to give everything else away. Anybody live in the abundant life? In Italian we say, Abodanza. Right? So now, Philippians 4.2, Philippians 4.4, 4, rejoice always. Now, here's the difficulty why we can't rejoice always. Because if you can't rejoice always, you're still connected to this world very much. Okay. Number two, verse 17, pray constantly. Everybody praying constantly? Yes. Now, can I challenge us again? The most important thing you did today was pray. Yes. I'm just challenging, I'm not asking for any information, is if you didn't do it today, you had no power today. And then if you don't pray and do your holy hour with God, you're going to find you're going to come up woefully short. You'll yell at people. You'll get disgusted with life. You'll, you'll be upset all the time. You'll have no power to love. So praying constantly, and I'm saying, how can you pray constantly? How many ever drove in a car before? Do you listen to the radio or turn the radio off and pray? Amen? The reason why I want to always encourage us to pray because Jesus said that in Gethsemane. And my friend Fulton Sheen, I, I served his mess when I was a little young whippersnapper. I can not believe nobody was fighting to serve his mess. I got to serve his mess. The second Sunday of Lent as he climbed the pulpit in the Archdiocese Cathedral of the Sacred Heart. And uh, he, he said to us that the hour that you pray is to defeat Satan's time. If you want to know how much you're not praying, look at your family. Look what's going on there. Do you see the power of God overcoming them? Hello? You're not praying. Hello? Well, I, I do my own way. It's not working. Pray constantly. That means all the time, right? You've got to be ready to pray at all times. The third thing he says there, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Does everybody just say thank you all the time? What, how do you say give thanks in Greek? Eucharistian. So when a deer hit my car, 
I said, thank you. <laughs> and now when I drive 287 and I see the deer sign, I said, Lord, keep your pets off this road. <laughs> They're in my way. Okay? Do you give thanks in all circumstances? How many are really live? I mean, this is a checklist to see if you're a great Christian. I failed the first one. I failed the second one. We're on the third one. I'm failing that one too, okay? Now this is the way, number number uh, 19. Do not quench the spirit. Right now, how do we quench the spirit? Probably we've all been doing that. Uh, we had enough prayer before. We don't need to do it anymore. Oh, didn't you get enough of that in church? Don't do that now. What are you praying again for? How many know you're quenching the Spirit? And I never really heard of preaching on quenching the Spirit. Here's the example of quenching the Spirit. Say the fire of the Holy Spirit's on your head. Amen? And what do you do? You take your bucket and try to get the fire out on you. And how many know we've quenched the Spirit because here we are in a godly group right now and later on we'll go with our buddies. We'll look at the St. Louis Cardinal reruns. And then we start cursing and everything else. And we just learn about God and then we quench the Holy Spirit by doing that. Amen? Amen. Nobody here ever uses foul language, right? Very quiet in here. Every time we use foul language, you quench the Spirit. You say to God, get out. How many know you're saying that? Amen? Amen. When you look at the Hootsie Tootsies on flat screen, you're saying, God, let's look at this together. <coughs> Is that what you want to say? Stop quenching the spirit. What does it mean? Putting the fire out. And in the book of Acts, there was a couple that quenched the spirit and they both dropped dead. Ananias and Sapphira. In Ephesians chapter 4, we try to put out the fire when we act all of a sudden, because we're with people and the pressure's on us not to act that way, we quench the spirit. When you saw God is not dead, number two, there's now the time, not coming, it's now, you're going to have to ask to stand up for your faith. And it's going to cost you everything. Which way you're going? Don't quench the spirit. Amen? And it, it, it has brought me literally to tears. Standing up for Jesus Christ. Next he says, do not despise prophesying. Prophesying is hearing a word from God. And when you say, I don't want to hear that word. Prophesying means getting a word from God, which means that I, if here's the word of God, that you need to direct your life. Because if you don't direct your life toward what God is saying, there'll be consequences. It's not predicting the future. Prophesying is giving a word from God to say, you should be on this path. And God helped New York City on the 19th. God helped New York City. But test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Now test. What, what, do, they, what do we mean by the test? The test means whether they really authentically believe in the cross and the resurrection where they authentically believe Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, where they authentically call sin, sin. By the way, you're not going to find that. You're going to find a lot of people fail the test. A lot. How many would like to know of a clergyman, you want to ask them, I told you how to, whether they could pass the test. You know how to get a clergyman? Ask them one question. Is there a help? And I'll tell you, the first word you're going to hear is this. Well, just say, say yes or no. Well, you've got to test everything. I want to be under direction for the rest of my life of men and women who will share with me the word of God and will preach the truth. I cannot hear untruth or I'll scream and throw a rotten tomato at them. In Christian love. <laughs> I don't want to be around untruth. You know why I don't want to be around untruth? My eternal destiny depends on it. So how many are buying now how do you know you're buying into the lies? You're buying into the lies when everybody makes it easier for you. 
Everybody's going to heaven. How many like that? Oh, there's no purgatory. Everybody's going. Where in the Bible does it say that? When everything is so easy, you failed the test. Amen? Amen. The narrow way. So how, how many think you could pass what Paul is saying here? Abstain from every form of evil. The form of evil. You know, there, there's so much. My heavens, I, I, I think I just better live in a cave. When I see the kids and how they're dressed and what they're doing. When I see the people in church, I just shake my head. And Father Jeff keeps saying, they bought into the culture, they bought into the... We have bought into the culture. The culture is more important than mo for most people than God. And so, what's our religion? Oh, we go to church, but we listen to, what we listen to our Bible verses from the culture. Mm. Oh, they like compassion, but they don't like repentance. Mm. So you can live any lifestyle you want. It's so corrupt. Yeah. So corrupt, isn't it? So abstain from any form of evil. Metamorphosis. Get, get away from that. And then Paul ends with a little benediction. May the God of peace, and, and if you underline there, the God of peace is Paul's favorite title for God. The God of Shalom. The God of Shalom. H himself purify you wholly. How many want to be purified wholly? If you really wanted a Holy Spirit dunking in purity, guess what? One man texted me last night and he says, Father Bill, I'm back. And I went, yeah. And he says, I can't go back to the way I was. I went, yeah. <coughs> I'm staying. And he says, I am staying and I'm bringing others. I went, yeah. <laughs> way to go. Way to go. What's the best example of bringing others? When they see you wholly changed. Not partially. It's got to be wholly changed that you scare them. Amen? Do you scare them, Brother Richard? Scare them at work. You've got to be wholly changed. Amen? Amen. Then, uh, now, if you underline there, there are three parts of us. Everybody underline that. Everybody know the three parts of you? You've got a spirit. You've got a soul. You've got a body. Does everybody know your three parts? Yep. Okay, now let's go through your three parts. This is good stuff you're getting. Turn to the person next to you. This is good stuff. <laughs> now, when you were made by God, you had a spirit. Now, I'll give you the Greek words, okay? You had a pneuma. Everybody say pneuma. P N E U M A. Pneuma. I remember uh, talking to a, a Greek lady. She says, Nevma. That's a, if, you're in Greek, if you're in Greece, you say, Nevma. But I said, this is biblical. I'm sticking with Numa, honey. <laughs> so if you're in Greece, it's a Nevma. If you're with Father Bill, it's a Numa. And, and we, have, we have a theology called, uh, pneumatology is the study of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So this is spirit. Next, you have another thing called a Sema. A soma. Everybody say soma. 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 And that's your body. How many ever heard of psychosomatic? Mm -hmm. and those are people who think they're sick all the time. How many ever live with a person that thinks they're sick all the time? Oh. I, got, I think I need to go to the hospital. You were just there three days ago. I need to go back. <laughs> and then when you're in the hospital, get me out of here. I mean, okay. And then when you get home, I think I need to go back again. <laughs> Well, what was the food better there or here? What, what do you like, all right? <laughs> and, and so we have a spirit, and then we have this, we have number two, we have a, a, suka, a suke, everybody say suke. 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 So now, each part that God created you in your, your pneuma, that's where you were created in God. When you were this big and you were created inside your mother's, do you remember that? Mm. God lit your spirit up. And he breathed upon it. And he said, burn it down. And there she was. She began growing. Okay, and now look at her, okay? And so that's the pneuma. That's the spark of life. Now, inside your pneuma, 
This is where you grow spiritually. Now, the reason why God gave you three parts, because they got to touch three parts. The pneuma's got to be able to touch what? Heaven. Is that good? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you got three parts of you, and they got to do some touching. Now, when you die, you've got to have also a uh, suke. A suke is your thinking. How many ever thought bad here before? Now, where is your greatest conversion, saints? Your mind. Now, when you get older, you go to confession. Let's say, Father, where I have sin, I have bad thoughts. And then you come back next week, more bad thoughts. <laughs> the women at my office, more bad thoughts. I walk down the beach, forget it, I lost it. I just totally lost it. I just, I just was really, really ripped out of everything. So I was just totally gone. So what do you have? This? So this is your greatest attack right now, are your thoughts. And what is that supposed to do? It's supposed to communicate with what's here. Your spirit's supposed to what? Go to heaven. What are your thoughts supposed to do? Is take you care of. Now, here's the problem with everyone in this room. Did I say everyone? Everyone. Did I say everyone? Everyone. 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 Our thoughts go nuts. Yes? Yes. You're driving. You go to work. Someone spills coffee on you. St. Louis Cardinals lose. I mean, all, all, of, your, all of your thoughts go nuts. Are, are you getting this? And what do the thoughts come from? The arrows of the enemy. Boing! Boing! Now, do those arrows stop going at your mind? Never stop. Okay? Even when you go to bed tonight, you get weird dreams. You know what my dream was? I, I remember it. I was all in panic mode because my tablet broke. <laughs> and when I looked at my tablet, it went like this. It was like, oh, I said, oh, I, said, oh, I got to get a new one and the money and everything. And so now, bad thoughts, again, review. James chapter 1, verse 12. Bad thoughts are not the sin until it becomes conceived in you. What exactly does that mean? It means you could be walking along and say, look at that woman. Ooh. That's not the sin until you say, look at that woman and I want her now. So you saw her, she says she's beautiful, and let's, let's go, honey. That's the sin. Because the arrows are coming at you what? Constantly. Let, let me shock you here. See all these sainted people out here? Don't they look really good? They got bad thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's ask all the sainted ladies, all right? <laughs> okay. Pick out the, the, the most sainted person in here. I think he or she will have to admit. Yeah. Yeah. Unless I wear a helmet and just... Okay? When you drive, you get bad thoughts. When you, when you talk to people. When you, you... I had a German grandmother and she'd go like this. And being with her the first five years of my life, what do I do when I see people? And then you do this. I didn't say a word. The thoughts. So we have this. We have the pneuma is the power of the spirit. It touches what heaven. The suke. Now the suke is called your soul. Okay, everybody got your soul. How many ever heard growing up, save your soul? Do you know what we're literally saying to you? Literally, we're saying save your, save your thoughts. So when a person dies. Their spirit, the pneuma, and the psyche go with God. Are you getting this? So all of your beloveds who are on the way to glory or in glory, I call it glory subservice because they didn't get their body yet. Their suke is there and there is their, is their pneuma is there. You got that? Is, is this heavy? Okay, now. So I have the power now to my spirit goes to heavenward and then guess what happens to my soma my soma uh, by the way there's another Greek word it's close to sema s-e-m-a you know what sema is it means you're coughing you're dead it means you're burial so your soma is right next to your sema 
And so, this has the power to touch heaven, this has the power to touch earth, and this has the power to go below earth. So look who, who we are. We're spirit, we're soul, and we're body. I go to heaven, I can contact earth, uh, earth, I can deal with what's going on down here, but I have these arrows of thoughts coming at me, amen? Disturbance, disturbance, danger, 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 amen? And then I have my body. Oh, 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 oh. Amen? You know, since I turned another age a few weeks ago, I got to count of four to get out of my chair. I was three, now I'm up to four. But, you know, the chairs are terrible. They all sink down. You got to, you know, like you're ready to go on a ski jump somewhere. Like that, you know? So I go, one, two, three. Okay. And so these are the three parts of us. And God has so ordained you, created by God, fearfully and wonderfully, Psalm 139, so that you and I can go into the, to reach everything. Now, what's going to happen at the end of time, so when a person dies, what happens to them? Everybody getting this? Their pneuma and their suke leave. Everybody got that? Now, where is their, where is their soma? It's six feet under. Or if you, if you put them in a little can with I dream a genie. <laughs> Henry, she wants, she wants to be in the coffin and keep her in there, all right? Okay, so... Okay, so everybody got the picture? So now this has the ability, this is who we are. Years ago, in Jewish belief in the Old Testament, they would say body and soul. So when you're talking to Jewish people under understanding, they don't mention this one here, the pneuma. St. Paul's here, so put a big star there. St. Paul calls it the spirit. So I always, tell, I always teach spirit, soul, and body. So if it's well with your spirit, if your thoughts are... How do you get your thoughts renewed? Well, you're getting your thoughts renewed right now, aren't you? How do you get your thoughts renewed? Romans 10, 17. You've got to be... The Word of God has got to come upon you. How many, how many has the Bible and the thoughts of the Word of God changed your thinking a little bit? How many have, have felt that that's empowered you a little bit? Because you're being taught the Word of God. And you say, yes, and then you like what the Word of God says. I accept it. And guess what? You have more firepower to fight the thoughts that are going on. I mean, everyone in this room, by studying the Bible these past three years, everybody should say, I'm really different because of the, the, the different thoughts that I'm now having. I don't have to think those thoughts. And your thoughts will lead you to the direction that your feet walk. So, be careful, you know. Ice cream. I need an ice cream. Where did you get that? Thoughts, right? Hot fudge sundae. Whipped cream. Go get one. Go get one, right? So, my thoughts. And how easy it is to put thoughts in other people's minds. Amen? Are you getting this? This is the whole human person as you were created by Almighty God. I love that Paul clarifies this. And I can say a lot more about that, but that would take you into philosophy. We're not going to do philosophy tonight. That's next week. And may your spirit and soul and body be sound. Now, underline the word sound. You know, you know how to say sound in Greek? Hygiene. Isn't that a great word? May your soul, spirit, soul and body be hygienic. So how many here want to have a spirit that's ready for God? That it meets the Holy Spirit. That's why as believers, you should always call upon the Holy Spirit. How many want to have a body that's a temple of the Holy Spirit, not tattooed up? And by the way, just for your extra edited information, the Bible clearly says in this transgender generation, the Bible clearly says men should never put on women's clothes. Crossing this or crossing that. What does it say? That? The Bible says it in the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, uh, I just I just read it. Deuteronomy, 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 21, 22. Do not put on. If you're a man, do not put on women's clothes. If you're a woman, do not put on man's clothes. Amen. A woman should look like a woman, and a man should look like a man. How many like that advice? Yes. I don't like walking around and say, "Is that a man or a woman?" <laughs> 
And then you gotta, you got to study the person to see all the features. And how, how many know your, your life can get worse after that? <laughs> That's right. And your thoughts go nuts. Amen. A man should be a man and a woman should be a woman. So even if you've got a four-year-old and you're, you're going to switch them. So sound means, hygiene means you're sound. You've got sound thinking. So how many are sound in your spirit? How many are sound in your thoughts? And by the way, you got to bring your thoughts. Here's, here's how you win the victory with your thoughts. Brothers and sisters, bring them captive to the Lord. I keep thinking about women, Lord, every single day. <laughs> so what do you got to do with your thoughts? You got to take your thoughts and say, here they are. Now here's the good little, uh, news, brothers and sisters. How many know that every temptation you and I went through, Jesus went through it before you? All right, so how, how do you d deal with it? Say, Lord, look. You're a guy, I'm a guy. There's a beautiful woman, you saw them in your day. How did you deal with them? Lord, give me the victory you did as you walked in the midst of your area. Amen? Give me that victory. Here are my thoughts. I put them, let them be captive to you because I want to live for you so that my psyche can, can and then your body, your body, you tattoo it up, you vanitize it. Okay? You get, you get like Queen Elizabeth, and when she died, she had an inch thick makeup on her face. I mean, Elizabeth's face had to be chiseled. They didn't wash a lot, I guess, right? And by the way, now we're being told don't take a shower every day because you're, you're, you're wiping away nutrients or something like that. Okay? Just be sound. Okay? Yes? No, he never did. He had temptations too. I said, I said, I said the temptations that everyone experiences. Jesus experienced. He was four. You can read right there. Okay. Good question. Okay. Uh, how many are passing Christianity 101? Nobody's passing Christianity 101. I can see your faces and I can read your thoughts, and you're giving me bad thoughts. So I better pray. <laughs> and your bodies. Your bodies are temples of the spirit, so they should be well maintained, right? And uh, I believe, you know, we're in a tattoo world. And the Bible forbids tattoos, Leviticus 19.28. I'm not recommending those in your family have tattoos say, not Leviticus 19.28. Don't do that. Okay. In fact, you now know it, so you don't do it in the future, okay? Don't blast them. Don't blast those at work. When I see the, the pictures Brother Richard throwing and all of a sudden it's hot out at Yankee Stadium and you see their arms with all the stripes on it and everything, I thought, like, yuck, yuck. Okay, and now they're all into beards and everything else. I go, yuck. So they got, I mean, we got a million dollars, you could uh, do whatever you want, I guess, right? But uh, the Bible warns us, don't decorate your, your flesh. Because what does your flesh already do? Your flesh is already against what? The Spirit. Amen? Mm -hmm. How many of all of our appetites can be against the Spirit of God in us? Amen? Nobody here ever over ate before, so I don't mean us. <laughs> Nobody here ever got drunk in our lives, so I don't mean anybody here. But our, our flesh can destroy the Spirit of God in each of us. Amen? Are, are you getting this? So you like Paul's last words of advice here? And this, is, this, is, this does what? It prepares the way. Now blameless. If you circle the word blameless. The word blameless means that uh, how many want to stand in front of God on Judgment Day and be blameless? I do. And blameless means a sacrificed offering. You and I got to live the Christian life. How many know the Christian life should be killing each of us right about now? Because you and I got to say what all the time? I don't go there. I don't look at that. They just took off uh, Kings and Prophets uh, um, they showed two shows of it because of the incredible, terrible sensuality in there. I mean, they were they were going way beyond the the sexual lines, right? They left nothing to your imagination. And so, I mean, that's what they're bringing out for us. It's destroying us. And so, what will happen? Say, oh, we see a Bible show on television. Then what do we say? It's okay. 
And then I got to deal with those people. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. And, and then I'm, I'm glad it's canceled. They only showed two shows and they dropped it. God is good. Amen? So I, I need my Soma. I, you know why I want to take better care of my Soma? When, when you put my Soma in the coffin, you know, I'll be like this. I want my Soma to be okay. I don't want anything from this day forward that I incurred to bring upon my body. Yeah, there might be a disease or something coming upon it. And by the way, I pray, pray medicinally that there's nothing that touches it. Do you pray medicinally over your Soma? Don't you touch me. I, I got work to do for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? Amen. So what does blameless mean? I stand in front of God. And Paul says over and over again, on the day of the Lord, we want to be blameless, right? That means nobody can accuse us correctly. Mm. And the accuser of our brethren is what? Cast out. Revelation 12, 13 and 14. Next he goes on there. He calls you his faithful, blameless at the coming. How do you say coming? Parousia. Now we're going to read about that coming. He calls you his faithful. He will do it. Yeah. <laughs> brethren, pray for us. Greet others with a holy kiss. Now, back in those days, they gave the sign of peace with a kiss. They didn't do the Richard Nixon. They did not do the handshake. The sign of peace was... Can you see all of you doing that in church on Sunday? She's a married woman. Get away. That was the sign of peace back then. So what happened when Judas betrayed Jesus? in Gethsemane. Remember you walked in Gethsemane? You know what Judas was doing? Giving Jesus the sign of peace. Wow. Peace be with you. That's the one. So Judas says, when I get into the garden, and he was leading 800 soldiers into the garden. 800. When he was, see, uh, they didn't call me up to give you all the background information. 800 soldiers that, that were, and I told you, uh, when you when I was sharing with you on Palm Sunday, there was about 100,000 people on that hill that saw Jesus. Well, why is the number so big? Because there's over 2 million people coming in for the Passover. So if you do math, there could be a whole lot more than 100,000. You thought there was only like uh, 20 people from Middletown, New Jersey. No, there was about 100,000 people going can you imagine all the hosannas that went out? Can you hear a, a thousand people singing hosanna? And then he says, brethren, pray for us. Gather all the brethren. Brethren means from the same womb. I acquire you. I adjure you by the Lord that this letter be read to all the brethren. Didn't we do that? Paul, we listen to you. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you always. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon us that we can take this word of your soon second coming. It could be 500 years from now. Nobody knows the day there, but it could be five minutes from now. So, Lord, bless this word to our hearts. May we, we bask in its truth and knowledge, and may our minds be changed and transformed and go from this day from glory to glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, get ready whenever he comes. He's coming.